And uh, by the way, I hear uh, German translation even when I'm speaking myself. Ah, no, I think it's better. Thanks a lot. Um, and this week will be a very crucial one when it comes to spending of the European Union, but also when it comes to climate protection and um, nature and biodiversity protection of the European Union. And there, unfortunately, it's not looking very good. The big topic, among others, of course, uh, this week will be the agricultural reform. And uh, it seems that we're going to have a voting which might not really end up uh, so great. Um, we already had a commission proposal from the old commission, which did not at all live up to any ideas about climate protection, biodiversity protection, even though the agriculture sector plays a really big part or is part of the problem, but certainly is also uh, one of the biggest victims of both um, climate, uh, the climate crisis as well as the biodiversity crisis. So the proposal from the commission already was not good. That why, that's why we asked the new commission to withdraw that proposal because also the new commission and the commission president they are very vocal about climate protection, about biodiversity protection, and uh, it doesn't help if you're just vocal about that. You also need to put that into practice. You also need to put that into the policies. And if the biggest piece of the EU budget is being spent on climate harmful, I mean, not all of it is climate harmful, but if it's spent on things that are potentially very climate harmful and are contributing to biodiversity loss, we have a big problem. The Commission, however, did not um, come up with a new proposal, so this week we're voting on the Parliament's position and um, the um, super grant coalition or whatever of this House is trying its best to make um, the bad Commission proposal um, even worse, so we'll see how the voting will go, but there's also a bit of um, not so great backdoor wizardry going on in order to prevent um, progressive amendments from uh, being voted. So um, all of this process is not very nice, not very clean, not very transparent. We're supposed to start voting tomorrow, even though translations aren't there yet. It's a whole mess. Um, and content-wise, it's also a big problem because this does nothing to fulfill the ambition of the Commission originally in the proposal, but also now from the Parliament does nothing to fulfill any ambition with regards to uh, climate protection and to um, biodiversity protection. And we just have seen the recent reports about how biodiversity loss is really dramatic. Um, and, um, well, we've seen a continuous report about climate, uh, the climate crisis being extremely dramatic. And we all need to contribute in order to make that better. The agricultural sector will have to contribute to that. And again, Agriculture is also one of the biggest victims. Uh, if it doesn't rain, if it's too hot, if there's extreme weather events, then farmers will be the first to suffer from that. But also when it comes to biodiversity loss, if there's no insects that do the pollination, for example, farmers will suffer most. So we do think it's important that the agricultural sector um, contributes to our climate and biodiversity targets. And with this proposal, but most likely also, depending on the vote will go, also with this parliament position, it will not help at all, and that's a very um, bad sign for our common commitment, because in the end it doesn't help if you just, you know, say how important climate is. You also need to vote for it. You also need to act on it. And that um, will be a very decisive vote to show that this week in the European Parliament. And I hand over to Philippe. Philippe. Into what, really? Uh, so uh, let's go to the questions. Um, if any. Yes, go straight to. Okay, uh, I think we have a question from uh, Georg from Channel 4 News. Hello, can you hear me? Does it work? Yes, yes, Georg. Yes. Yes. Yeah, great. Uh, it's Georg von Herrick from Channel 4 News. Uh, on Brexit, uh, I wonder whether. You have a view on the UK so far refusing to restart uh, negotiations with the EU and still maintaining that the EU needs to make a fundamental shift. Thanks. What do you want me to say? I mean, uh, my uh, personal belief is that uh, uh, that the, uh, the, the entourage of Boris Johnson doesn't want to deal, that the Prime Minister is still hesitating, but... Uh, but uh, it takes two to tango. If they don't want to speak, what can we say? We can't speak with ourselves, can we?
Thank you. Akio, did you have a follow-up question? No, that's fine. Okay, great. Um, all right, do we have any questions from the room? Obviously, I can't see them in person. But... Okay, we have... Oh, we have... Okay, we have a question from Radio Radicala. Just one moment. I'll see connects. Okay, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. David Carretta, Radio Radicale. I yes, would can... have a question on, um, on, on, on the negotiation on the recovery fund and um, the conditionality, conditionality mechanism. I'm wondering uh, uh, what will happen uh, this afternoon and, and tomorrow, since uh, there could be a meeting on the MFF, and today there is a meeting on the uh, rule of law. Um, what is your position on uh, all that issue? Should the uh, Parliament compromise uh, at the end and accept the uh, German uh, uh, proposal. Thank you. Well, uh, if I may, uh, you, your question is contradictory. I mean, you say should the parliament compromise and then should the parliament accept the German proposal? I mean, the German proposal is a compromise between council members and Viktor Orban. Basically, what you ask us is whether we should surrender, which is not exactly the same thing as compromise. Yes, we are prepared to compromise, but we are not prepared to surrender. Uh, David, did you have a did you have a follow up or a thought? No, thank you. No, okay. Uh, any other questions? No one. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for following, um, and uh, we wish you a very good week. Thank you all.